We are eager to see this technology in action, to see how it can help us solve the problems like blocking the box, because that holds up traffic and makes our road less safe for everyone. Keeping cars out of transit parking lanes, getting a better and, and, and bigger view of how traffic is moving along the whole corridor so we could move it along. And Toronto is partnering with the province to create traffic pilot zones. This is where companies are going to be able to test out technologies to improve urban mobility. And right now we're joined live by Maddie Simiotiki, professor of geography and planning and director of the Infrastructure Institute at the University of Toronto. So, Maddie, we just heard Mayor Chow talk about blocking the box. Literally, that means sitting in the intersection while the other flow of traffic has right away. Nobody can move. Let's talk about this. Yeah, blocking the box. Is that not one of the most frustrating experiences when you're trying to get through and someone else is in that lane? Uh, some of these technologies, I think what they're going to be looking for is how can they use uh, video and digital types of technology to understand who's in the box, how long they've been there, and whether they can create new mechanisms to move people along. We know that they've brought in the old-fashioned way, where, they're, where they now have stewards at some of the major intersections trying to direct traffic and move people along. Can technology help and bring this to more lanes so it's not just people on the street trying to uh, guide the traffic, but now we can use technology to make the whole system more efficient? Okay, so Maddie, what about just basic timing of traffic lights? How does this differ? Does it assist? There have been dreams going back decades that we'd have automated traffic lights, that it would be able to make sure that when you're coming up uh, to the light, it's always green for you. But keep in mind, when it's green for you, it's red for someone else. And that's always been the challenge. Perhaps with new AI technologies, they can get more efficient. We think we can squeeze more efficiency out of the network. But overall, we have too many cars for not enough road space. This will make some difference, but it's not going to transform the gridlock that we're experiencing today. Okay, Maddie, you don't um, give me too much confidence when you say we've had dreams for decades. Have any other major cities, you know, enacted this type of technology? Yeah, there are examples from Sydney, Australia, where they brought in some of these technologies on the traffic lights. That technology has now gone global. We have companies here, companies like MyoVision, which has been a real innovator in trying to use some of these smart city technologies, and they sell it all around the world. We have other companies. We have Geotab, which has done stuff around logistics. We have a company called Pantonium, which is looking at on-demand uh, transit buses. So we have technologies here. We need to pilot them. And I do think this is a good idea that we're experimenting. But we shouldn't put too much hope on technology to be all of our uh, salvation. We have major challenges uh, that we have to face. OK, so Maddie, since this whole debacle began with the garden construction, um, what have you noticed about traffic flow up until today? It's terrible. It's terrible everywhere because it's not just the gardener. It's on parallel routes. Uh, it's on different types of modes uh, and infrastructure that's being built. Sometimes it's road construction. Sometimes uh, it's energy. Sometimes it's water and sewers. Uh, so it's really caused gridlock. And what you see is that it fans out from one link that's out of uh, action and it just fans out across the entire network. The key is that we have public transit. You can see in this image right along that stretch of the gardener, there's public transit adjacent. We need to be providing people People with all sorts of alternatives and making it easier for them to link their public transit trips uh, so that they can use it as a viable alternative to trying to uh, fight congestion in our region. And Maddie, what about the challenges that city engineers, city planners, they face when trying to, you know, make use of this technology? We're risk averse in this city. Uh, we really tend to like to uh, go slow to understand all the implications. We do everything by pilot uh, studies and pilot programs. I think that's good that we learn, uh, but we are gonna have to be ambitious. And then there's cost. All of these technologies come with a financial cost and there's no guarantee that they'll work. The city is uh, struggling financially. And so there, there's a long way to go before a small pilot becomes something that can be used across the entire network. But it's great that we're innovating and it's great that all three orders of government are coming together uh, to try to make us more efficient. And Maddie, final words? I hope this works. And I think all of, everyone in the city should be looking for it. But we shouldn't be pinning all of our hopes on new technologies. There are some old approaches, public transit, walking, cycling, finding other alternatives, carpooling, all sorts of ways that we're going to need to go if we're going to make our city's congestion a little lighter. All right. Maddie Simiotiki, Professor of Geography and Planning and Director of the Infrastructure Institute at the University of Toronto. Thanks a lot.